Some of you were also soldiers that got left behind in a retreat, either to fade away or to get tortured. And he broke up with us, you know, cheated on us, or threw us under the bus. And we will, of course, get more into this. And of course, which puts you into victimhood. And, you know, a predator can smell that. Hello and welcome to my channel Tools for Ascension by Wolfgang. And I'm Wolfgang. In the following guided meditation, we will be clearing many layers of fear of abandonment and codependency issues. I will focus on a really strong um, progressive relaxation and also induction for this guided meditation, so watch out. Uh, but first let us just consider the definition and main points of fear of abandonment and codependency issues. Uh, they are a form of anxiety that um, affects so many of us, you know, myself included, and uh, most likely, of course, you too. So some fear of abandonment and codependency issues uh, have originated in this life, but many times the original trauma that we tap into when our abandonment issues are triggered comes from the deep subconscious, most likely past life. And with my clients, I always ask the high self um, how much of the trauma that is being experienced by my client is coming from this lifetime and how much is coming from a past lifetime. So after some time, you know, you get an idea of where stuff is at. So, um, of course, you know, abandonment issues are cured when an individual has a strong fear of losing loved ones. People with abandonment and codependency issues can have difficulties in relationships. They may exhibit symptoms such as clinginess or manipulative behavior. And uh, this was a huge problem in my personal life. Uh, you know, once my fear of losing whatever girlfriend I had at that time kicked in, I mean, it was all over. Uh, I was not myself anymore after that. Uh, my behavior could be summarized in the sentence, please let me know what you want so I can better change my life to suit your needs. So. This, of course, is the hallmark of codependency. And of course, all my spontaneity, natural charm and swagger, it was all out the window. You know, it get replaced by this creepy, clingy, stilted energy and behavior, uh, which was very uncomfortable for us and painful, just like a bad joke. So, here are some major symptoms of having abandonment issues. You know, one of the most important is difficulties feeling worthy. So many times there are still a past lifetime aspect that were treated like dirt. You know, absolutely valueless. Uh, many of us have been squandered as slaves for, you know, withering away in, um, in construction sites, um, in quarries, in mines, or as gladiators. Also, as soldiers, um, there was a lot of abandonment, you know, just like human wave, you know, expendable, and so on. And, well, slave, <laughs> slave lies um, were definitely very bad. And uh, as, as such, um, then another variety is, of course, then sex slave and prostitution, you know, which is demeaning on a whole other level. And um, of course, then there is also the more natural stuff, you know, where we got lost as kids in the forest. I come across that quite a lot. And, um, you know, some of us were given away by their parents into slavery and, and many times this was so they could survive. People were sometimes so poor they could not feed their kids and 
you know, they had to give their children away or starve, or the children would have to starve, and it broke their heart. But of course, those children also got traumatized. I run quite a lot about this in, in my past life regression. Or, you know, some of them were left in the forest to starve, just like in a fairy tale, Hansel and Gretel. I mean, again, I came across this kind of stuff. And um, some, you know, were just left to be found. I mean, we have Moses as a big example. And um, some of you were also soldiers that got left behind in a retreat, either to fade away or to get tortured. And then there are all those whose sweethearts got lost at sea or got lost at war, leaving them abandoned at the mercies of others and without protection. When you were a woman, yeah. you know, in your tribe and your man didn't come back, uh, that was a hard life, you know, without the protection of another male, especially if you had children. I've come across this a lot in all kinds of cultures. Mongolian, Native American, you know, a lot of tribal cultures, even in India. <laughs> you know, when your husband was gone, you know, you were screwed. <clears throat> of course, um, there are also other obvious <laughs> um, reasons, you know, where, for instance, our partner abandoned us for another one, you know, a big one. Of course, everybody knows this. You know? And uh, he broke up with us you know, cheated on us or threw us under the bus. And we will, of course, get more into this. And in, uh, I've seen, you know, so many past life regressions where there was an illegitimate love relationship. And when it got discovered, I mean busted, the one of the higher standing put the blame on the lower one, you know, who was basically thrown under the bus and banished, you know, or punished, you know, and then sometimes, or just disappeared. And then you have some angry ghost from there. So these traumatic impressions that we still carry is, of course, you know, our subconscious. You know, it's in our subconscious, and it causes us, you know, to give too much, you know, or to be, you know, over eagerly to please, you know, if you, you know, think that your survival is at stake. And of course, which puts you into victimhood. And, you know, a predator can smell that, you know, I mean, I can definitely, um, you know, feel when somebody has this victimhood, you know, there, I mean, I'm not a predator. Uh, I could be, <laughs> I'm not. And uh, so, you know, um, this is very visible somehow or another. And of course, it, you know, if you got betrayed, you know, there is jealousy in your relationship, you know, where there is fear of losing the others. And then, of course, with that comes like needing to control or to be controlled uh, by your partner, you know, or just, you know, trusting your partner's pure intentions. And, you know, just feeling completely insecure about your relationship. So, and of course, feeling insecure, you know, makes it very difficult to feel intimate emotionally. I mean, really, intimacy happens when you do not feel judgment by the other. You know, very important to understand this. You know, once you're not judged by another, you know, you can, you know, speak your mind you know, and be intimate in this. And when you do not trust this, you know, well, if I tell him or her that or this, they may leave. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. And so um, let me just tell you a little joke, you know, that summarizes these issues, the abandonment issues. So uh, there's his father and he has a young son, yeah, about five years old. And he says, um, son, um, this is a very important lesson I have to um, tell you, I have to teach you. Um, please, you know, climb up on that cabinet, you know, and then close your eyes and jump into my arms. You know, I will be standing here and catching you. And the son says, ah, no, daddy, I know. You know, you're a trickster, you know, you're not going to catch me. And I'm playing, you know, I'm going to just smack. And the father says, come on, son, I'm your father. You know, why would I do something like this to you? You know, I'm your father, I love you. 
and you know you should trust me you know so please climb up there close your eyes you know count to three you know and jump and i will catch you all right and so when the son wakes up in the hospital you know the father says look son this was a lesson you know i love you very much do not trust anybody even your father so you know this is <laughs> abandonment and trust issue um so <clears throat> um a lot of this you know comes um then or leads to uh, having trouble you know to express your emotion you know? uh and you know when you have fear of of losing you know your love you know of course you stay away from any intense emotions um like an abandoned individual you know may even rebuff physical and emotional comfort from their partner you know like a hug or compliment you it's like oh yeah no 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 <laughs> no limit hunger uh, of course um, these self-sabotaging cycles you know are trauma responses and patterns learned earlier in life you know, as self-preservation and your fear of abandonment is really a fear of intimacy and connection because it hurts so much when it is over. Yeah? It's the hangover from a love addiction. A hangover from a love addiction. Yeah? And I have to admit that I went into relationships where I knew for sure that I would be hurt big time when it was over. And surely I suffered withdrawals. Uh, but I never regretted it. Yeah, I never regretted this. And and the Buddhists would say, Yeah, I told you so. Yeah. Attachment leads to suffering. Yeah, I mean um but uh, <laughs> you have to choose your attachment wisely, I think. So anyhow, so to change these patterns, you know, we need to be willing, I mean, to go deep into the pit of emotional garbage from past lifetime and from this lifetime. You know, to find out what happened and to help these traumatized aspects to move into higher consciousness patterns of self-healing. So the obvious issues, you know, are traumatic experiences like childhood abuse, neglect, and the loss of loved ones. You know, uh, many times when grandpa or granny died, you know, this was one of the most traumatic events in with my clients and of course you know abandonment issues are also closely linked to insecure attachment styles you know which are characterized by difficulty forming close stable relationships with others you know? so uh, many times or every time we get emotionally too close you know we start with self-sabotaging behavior you know due to fear of losing a loved ones. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it in myself. <laughs> and watching myself, hey, what is going on? Why am I acting suddenly like this? There can only be one outcome. Mm -hmm. So in the following guided meditation, we will be working on the main areas of your subconsciousness that causes abandonment issues. You know, and that are not considered the run of the mill abandonment psycho you know, in the abandonment psychological paradigm. You know, there is something new there. So we have curses. You know? Of course we and our ancestors got cursed when they abandoned others. I mean guaranteed. You know, somebody is really mad at you. And if you think that curses don't work, you know, especially when people are really emotionally involved, you know, think again. And of course there is karma when we and our ancestors abandoned others. You know, I mean, God's justice, you know, there is justice, there is karma. So many times when we abandon others, we have to be abandoned ourselves. And there are also vows. You know, um, there are, you know, very exclusive vows, for instance, to only love one person forever and ever. Or to never love anymore. You know? I mean, because it hurts so much when we got abandoned. 
betrayed. And so many times when there was separation, you know, very heavy vows were taken and they were very sincerely made. But um, in these lifetimes, you know, we have other life partners and so on. So all see these vows, you know, they have an effect in your subconscious because they were very sincerely done many times. Mm -hmm. And there are also contracts, you know, sometimes our soul wants to have a certain lesson and experience like abandonment. And, um, you know, there you have your lifetime now. Happens also a lot. You know, a lot of experiences are volunteered for. I mean, you go to horror movies, <laughs> right? So you volunteer, you know, for a scary experience, right? So the soul also, you know, it subscribes to all kinds of lifetimes. And I mean, a big thing that nobody, you know, or that very few people consider are ghosts, it means discarnates you know, from other lifetimes that didn't make it into the higher dimensions. So ghosts from our own past lifetimes, you know, or that from others, you know, that have a benefit. You, see, you know, sometimes um, some ghosts, you know, they want revenge because we dumped them or left them behind, or they think, or they think that we dumped them and left behind, and left them behind. I mean, maybe they died in war or got shipwrecked. Mm -hmm. And others, they're heartbroken because they got abused in your love. Mm -hmm. And then their trauma gets triggered, you know, when you get into a similar situation. They kick in then with their stuff and you wonder, Ooh, wow, this is much stronger than it should be. And of course, you know, there are others like, you know, lost children of yours from past lifetimes. Even sometimes aborted children or miscarriages, you know, they're all floating around there. And they can affect us with their pain and suffering. Now this here is going to be a shotgun meditation. And will probably not clear all the abandonment issues for you. And then there will be many layers and you couldn't take it all at a time anyhow. So um, try the same meditation again in a month and observe you know, um, any new layers that start to emerge. I mean, there will be changes. Of course, you may also treat yourself to a private session and cut right to the chase. My prices are still very reasonable. Uh, just go to my website and send me an email, you know, or, um, you know, there are other information in the credits um, below. Uh, so uh, please reward my time and expertise by giving me a thumbs up or subscribe and share the video, which takes only a second and will help me get the message out here. All right, now um, please sit on a comfortable office chair and balance your body so your spine stacks really nicely. Um, personally, I like to sway a little bit. It's called the Sufi grind. Um, you know, it's very difficult to enjoy bliss when your back hurts, you know, or when you're slumping. Or um, you can lay down and use this video as an ASMR tool, you know, and then you will just probably sooner or later pass out into sleep, you know, with great benefit. Maybe not the same potency as compared to being aware and getting the answers, but, you know, it's better than nothing and plus you're going to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, I advise to use earbuds or headphones. Um, to cancel out outside distraction and it's definitely better sound quality. And surely, if you're listening to the podcast, do not drive or operate heavy machinery. I mean, really, do not do so. And uh, smile like an idiot and reside in your heart. You will not have access to the higher dimensions unless you vibrate at a certain love frequency. You know? And also breathe at a pace and so you can hear the air flowing through your nostrils. Uh, very important, you know, at least initially. Uh, later on, um, once you're more tranced out and everything is purified, you know, you can breathe normally. And also, you do not have to repeat my affirmations. Just think or say Amen when I say Amen, um, but and also please mean it or not your head. Mm -hmm. 
Gedanken and then definitely be in a childlike state of innocence during the guided meditation. So uh, you know, just pay attention to what pops into your awareness and try not to judge it, you know, or to rationalize it at the moment. Uh, you can always do that later on after the meditation. Just try to stay in your heart. You know, the mental plane is not um, where we want to be. And um, so once, um, you know, you say, say Amen, it takes about three to five seconds for the results to kick in. You know, there are probably some shifts in your force field. And you may have some tingling. Um, that uh, goes through your body, that's always a good sign. This means that your chi is um, flowing stronger in this area. You know, you're going from a lower chi energy state to a higher chi energy state. Always a good sign. Mm -hmm. And now just um, smile and close your eyes. And now please smile. We're going to be addressing Absolute Source, God in other words. Mm -hmm. the highest in you know, absolute source nobody nothing beyond or higher than that the origin of everything mm -hmm. so we asked absolute source to make sure that everything that happens in and from this meditation here is going to be for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes um, we also asked did we use our time and energy in the most effective way here right now? Get the most beneficial, you know, results in, in this lifetime here from this. Mm -hmm. Did we get open to these new experiences mm -hmm. towards love and light? Mm -hmm. And again, that we are completely safe in every aspect. Amen. 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 Make sure you agree to this and smile. Mm -hmm. And now imagine, or just start feeling, you know, imagining, feeling, not really visualizing, just feeling this energy coming into your crown at the top of the head. It's like a smiling, loving energy from source. It's just flowing in there. It's kind of latitious. Latush, it's like a lover, tender, fluffy, artistic, and very purifying and relaxing. And it's spreading all over your crown. Mm -hmm. And your whole scalp starts relaxing. It feels wonderful. Some of you, you know, might even feel a brightness coming in there. And now it will start seeping into your forehead. Yeah, oh, this is so good when that relaxes. Mm -hmm. And now from the forehead it starts seeping into your eye sockets. And it starts to relax those wing muscles around your eyes. Your whole eye just relax. Ah, oh, even your eyebrow. And now the eye socket start overflowing with this love and the energy flows into the temples and also seeps into your jaw. And suddenly you become aware of all the tension you have been holding in your jaw. This become Slack, John, just let go. Let go. And relax your tongue too. Just let go of your tongue. Ah, that feels so good. And now also become aware of the tension you're still holding in your upper lip. And just let go. Just let that smile, just this fluffy smile, creep into your upper lip. Ah, yeah, that feels so good. It becomes radiant, and now it's flowing into your lower lip. And that also lets go. 
And there's a smile, you know, creeping into your cheeks. And it tingles a little bit. Hmm. Now it's seeping down into your throat. Ah, clearing all the tension you're holding there. All that tightness. All that tightness. Now it flows over and up your ears and then into the back of the head which opens up and it feels as if somebody pulled a plug and all the tension just starts flowing out. Mm. Ah, that feels good. And now that loving energy starts flowing around the spine. Relaxing all the muscles that are parallel to the spine, left and right, yeah. Relaxing the space between the vertebrates. Mm. Oh, this feels good. Gradually it goes back to the heart and seeps over the rib cage. Ah. And we just let go of all the tension that we're holding in the ribcage. Ah, that feels so good. Ah, another deep breath and just letting go. Ah, yeah. And now this beautiful relaxing energy from source starts filling your whole tummy and your chest cage up. It spreads out from the ribs, going into your lungs first and filling them up till they feel completely radiant. Ah, and your breathing becomes so much lighter and effortless. Deep, oh, it's so pleasurable to breathe deeply. Mm. Now this beautiful energy flows into your intestinal area. And your intestines, your tummy area starts just feeling like a peaceful lake. In the moonshine, in the full moonshine. A peaceful lay. Ah, that feels good. Mm. And once this lake is completely saturated with peace, the energy flows down into your pelvic area and you become aware of all your little hurts and tightness there. And this loving energy starts going wherever you feel tightness, wherever it feels unpleasant, and it brings in the love and light and rainbow colors that are very, very healing. Just allow those rainbow colors to permeat your whole pelvic air. Ah, yeah. You probably, if you do this right, get a lot of tingling and cribbling all over. Very good. Now this cribbling, tingling aura of love and light with rainbow colors starts creeping into your thighs. And your thighs start to relax. And a lot of energy starts flowing into your knees and it charges up your knees. It stuffs up any leakage that is there in your knees, where your knees leachy. Mm -hmm. It clears all those. It clears also any blockages from past life trauma. And now 
yes, ah, oh, it's just energy goes down into the calves. Ah, oh, that feels so good. Ah, oh, that feels so good. And there, let go. Ah, oh, there, let go. Yes, yes. And now also the ankles get cleared up from all the tension that has been building up there. There's lots of tiny little bones. And they're all balancing out. All balancing out. And your foot chakras are opening and your meridians to your little toes, they're all opening and now the energy just clears out and all the stuffed up stuff, the stuck stuff that got stuck in your foot chakras is just opening up and this purifying energy is like gushing out your feet, cleansing whatever is still in your body, whatever tension is there, whatever dark chi is there, just pulling it out. Whatever else tenseness you find in your body, you just send down this current that cleanses you. And we smile and we thank the Creator for the kindness, for the mercy. You're so grateful, you're so grateful. Now we run this love that comes into us from source deep into the center of the earth. Mm -hmm. It's deep into the center of the earth. And whenever you see any darkness and goo, like molasses, just dissolve it. Mm -hmm. And now with your breath, you even start pulling the love from source into your crown, into your heart, and on the exhale, you send it into the earth. With a beautiful smile, you know, let Mother Earth know that you think of her, and that you will show well. Count. And now start also pulling up the love from the earth goddess and from the heavens simultaneously into your heart. And then on the exhale you expand this aura of love around you. Deep breathing and smile like an idiot. You know in front of source and in front of mother earth we are all bumbling idiots. It's a nice, humble gesture of love. <laughs> if you think you're hot stuff in front of source, in front of earth, you know, think again. So smiling like an idiot is very, very appropriate. Mm -hmm. And just pull in that love as much as you can into your heart. Mm -hmm. Very good. And smile. So as long as you sit it in your heart, you know, you're very intuitive. You are in the balance of heaven and earth. And now, <coughs> um, let's just um, teach you how to feel a yes and how to feel a no. Of course, many of us, you know, are clear sentient or clear, you can hear or are good seers. So, um, you might just get, you know, plain text messages or an inner knowing. Um, some of you are newer to this. And a, a yes would be, let's say, um, an energy of love, you know, welling up in your heart or an energy, you know, flowing from the heart to the head. Um, I will show you now. Just pay attention. Amen. You may have felt this. I'm going to do it one more time. I show you now. Amen. Okay, and the no would be an energy from the heart to the feet, like a downer. I will show you now. Amen. So this would be a no. Amen.
Right? If you couldn't get an answer like this, um, ask the spirit guides to make it stronger for you. Amen. Or you use a pendulum, and I have a video on how to use a pendulum, or just go with the meditation. You know, um, if you, even if you get five things right, that's good. Even two or three things, you know, can help you a lot. Some of you may get 50%, which is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do is probably better than doing nothing. All right. Okay, so now, um, again, make sure you have a lot of love in your heart. Mm -hmm. And now we asked your inner child, that is a sub-personality of you, that is you, like a little child before school, mm -hmm. that's maybe four to six years old. Mm -hmm. Let's ask your inner child to please be in front of you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And now direct on the exhale that love that you gathered from the earth and from the heavens to that inner child. Mm -hmm. Send it into its heart. Mm -hmm. And say hello to it and tell it that you love it. Mm -hmm. and smile and don't scare the inner child. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now ask it, does it feel abandoned by you, yes or no? And ask it one more time, does it feel abandoned by you, yes or no? And I have to say, you know, many adults abandon their inner child. And, um, you can ask your inner child, can you be happy if your inner child feels abandoned, yes or no? And now, um, whatever it says, promise your inner child to please look after it and try to make it happy. You know, do it now. Um, And also um, promise it, of course it's your free will, but I suggest promise it to come in and manifest through you, maybe to silliness or playfulness or just plain out joy, mm -hmm. whenever it is appropriate. You know, whenever it is appropriate, not during the board meeting, for instance. No? Amen. Okay, and now um, just we ask, you know, we, we send a lot of love to the inner child and we ask it to play. It can shape shift, for instance, into an eagle. Mm -hmm. It can just play around. Now we ask for your own divine aspect, your all known aspect, commonly known as high self. I wouldn't really call it Atma, that's a slightly different definition. But the high self, you know, which is like an intermediary position to your soul and you, it's an aspect of you that is there to communicate with you from the higher dimensional mind. Mm -hmm. So we ask that aspect, this inner knowing that is perfect, you know, while you, when you reside in your heart, mm -hmm. how much of you, I mean, how many percent of your abandonment issues come from your inner child in this lifetime. And so just take, you know, whatever pops into your mind, you know, at face value, don't rationalize it, as I said, stay in the heart. Let's ask one more time. So how much of your abandonment trauma comes from this lifetime? And then, of course, the other stuff is in from past lifetimes. Mm -hmm. So let's ask, so how much of your abandoned abandon and codependency issues comes from past lifetimes? And now ask, how much of your abandonment and codependency issues is due to 
karma. So you may get a percentage or like a lot or not so much, you know, or get a feeling about it. I mean, we're not mortgage in the house here. Now mm -hmm. asked, you know, or we asked how much of your abandonment and codependency issues is due to ghosts. Now asked how much of your abandonment and codependency issues is due to vows. And now asked how much of your codependency and abandonment issues is due to spells and curses. Let's take a variation on this. In how many lifetimes did spells, glamours, bindings, love spells and curses make you codependent? And in how many lifetimes did you or your ancestors do vows, oaths, submitted, surrendered, made promises, signed contracts, or gave your power away, making you codependent in this life. And let's just get a quick overview. So just pay attention to the numbers that pop into your mind. Don't try to rationalize it. It's just an overview. So, in how many lifetimes did you abandon others? In how many lifetimes did others abandon you? Are there any ghost or soul fragments stuck around these type of issues? How many? How many vows did we do when we abandoned others, probably due to guilt? And what is the gist of these vows? Did you vow not to love anymore? Were there any curses involved? What effects do these curses still have on the others? And how much interference is there on you? And how much interference is there from ancestor karma? You know, like both your clan history, you know, we always, let's say, used to abandon the weak and the sick. That was the custom. So there might be a lot of karma from those ancestors in that tradition. And then also, how much interference is there from feuding clans in their ancestors, like ghost or kidnapped ones? And now we ask you know, for forgiveness and release. So, dear source of all, and of course also Archangel Michael, I'm a sovereign, divine, eternal being, that is residing in a human body at this time. In the name of the Absolute Source, 
I resent any and all vows, contracts, spells and curses I have taken, anyone in this body has taken, and anyone within my genetic lineage has taken pertaining to abandonment and codependency on this incarnation and all incarnations across space and time, all parallel realities, parallel universes, alternate realities, alternate universes, all planetary systems, all solar systems, all dimensions and the void. Amen. And so it is. Swaha. Smile and breathe love. Stay in your heart. That's where your potency is. Keep on breathing deeply, breathing from heaven and earth, and then send this love all around. And now let's address again our soul, our high self, our all-knowing part. Do you still have interference from past lifetime abandoned or codependent ghost? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And how many of those ghosts um, are from childhood, you know, abandonment like Moses? And how many have issues from neglect due to, or maybe let's an overburdened mom, a teen mom? And how many um, have no support from their parents and are traumatized from that? And how many got lost in the woods or in a crowd of people or during wartime? And how many got pimped out or used for prostitution by their parents or by their caretakers? Many of those did not get old. And how many of them have issues from sexual abuse? And how many of them got sacrificed by their own loved ones? And how many of them have issues from loveless lifetimes that are grey and bleak? And how many of them had been abandoned at an important date? And how many have been abandoned at a wedding? How many have been abandoned due to pregnancy? And how many have been abandoned for another partner? That happened quite a lot, so how many? And how many um, have been abandoned for war. It happened a lot, you know, the guy volunteers, ah, I'm gonna be a hero, do this and that, and never comes back, you know, this poor wife or sweetheart is home pregnant, you know, ruined, her life is ruined. You know, it happened quite a lot. 
So how many, you know, got abandoned for war? And then how many got abandoned, you know, for bad health? And how many got abandoned, you know, for old age? And how many got abandoned for betrayal? This could be around money, blackmail, envy, and other reasons. But how many got abandoned, you know, for betrayal? And how many are there that got abandoned into slavery? And how many got abandoned in business dealings? You know, like we're gonna pay the rent, we're gonna pay the loan, and then they don't come through. And that, of course, leads into how many are there you know, that have issues from betrayal, on contracts, cheating, you know, and other, you know, unkosher behavior. And are there any others that have been thrown under the bus? So these relationships, they are very complicated, you know, very big knot of karma builds over the lifetime, kind of like the Gordian knot. So we ask our ancestors, our guides, our inner child, our high self, Archangel Daniel, and of course Source, to please just slash that knot of karma between us and those that we abandoned, you know, or that abandoned us, and also all aspects that are still caught in the codependent relationships now. And send love and smile, send love and smile and breathe heavy. And we also ask that any human ghost that's still following us around and cursing or sabotaging our relationships, our, our behavior. You know, if you like to ask to please bring any stuck spirits or ghosts that keep us in abandonment and codependency trauma to the Arcturian love healing and ascension temples. And there, please reunite them with lost loved ones that are still stuck on the astral plane like lost baby spirits, you know, pets, sweethearts, and so on. And then once they are assembled, please show them the higher as well as the hidden aspects of their incarnation. Show them what was karma, what was volunteered for, you know, to learn a lesson, and what was sabotaged by the dark side. And then help them with forgiveness. Amen, amen, amen. Keep sending love and send this love from the heart into the heavens and that way they'll get a stairway to the heavens. <coughs> and we ask that once they forgive and ask for forgiveness, we ask absolute source to please clear any entanglement that still binds them, like vows, contracts, promises, curses, candle magic, black magic and all kinds of forms of bindings, worms, booby traps, claws, hypnotic suggestion, hooks, cords, chains, and everything else that was not mentioned but needs to leave you know, our space at this time. Um, um, um. And just send love, send love, smile, And you probably feel the energy sleeving, floating out the top of the head. Mm -hmm. Just support them with love. 
And while this is going on, let's just do another invocation. So dear source of all and Archangel Michael, I am a sovereign, divine, eternal being that is residing in a human body at this time. So in the name of Absolute Source, I will send any and all vows and contracts I have taken, anyone in this body has taken, and anyone within my genetic lineage has taken, pertaining to abandonment from this incarnation and all incarnations across space and time, and all parallel realities, parallel universes, alternate realities, alternate universes, all planetary system, all source system, all dimensions and the world. Um, um, um. I am a sovereign divine eternal being that is residing in the human body at this time. I request in the name of the Absolute Source to liberate, return, stolen, captured parts of my soul, my energy, in my mind or ghost. Return them to my soul now. Amen, Amen, Amen. And dear spirit guides, and divine angels of love and light and source, please transmute any physical, astral, emotional, mental and spiritual trauma to healing energy and upgrade us to our divine blueprint as much as possible now. Amen, Amen, Amen. And then please give us the protection of love and light that will constantly follow us around and it keeps us safe on all levels, 24-7. Amen, 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 and please lock this in. Amen. Then to count to three, and then you're fully grounded back in vacant day consciousness. One, two, three. Well, <laughs> I hope this was, you know, a nice lesson for you. Very purifying, definitely very relaxing. Well, back to this reality again here. And of course, um, you know, your clearing is depending, of course, on the inside, the lessons you learn, your level of forgiveness. And of course, you know, the gravity of vows and curses. Many issues have to be looked up in, in greater detail before they can be released. So that is... Um, when a lesson or insight is needed before the trauma can be transmuted. So the insight is like homework that you got to do. You know, good parents help with the homework, but they don't make it all. You know, so um, you got to do some of the work. And of course, um, that is where a private session with me will be very helpful. Um, we all need somebody sometimes to help us over the hump. And um, I'm quite successful doing this in a very short time. And just ask your high self, you know, use the, ask the pendulum what they think about it, you know. But in general, um, we ask our highest and most accessible guidance to please guide us through books, YouTube information, websites, people, nature, dreams, and much more to our highest good. Yeah. If you do not know how to use a pendulum, yeah, please watch my video. Or to use a pendulum. Uh, then also please now drink a lot of water after this meditation. If you get a headache, you have to drink more water. So I recommend about you know a liter or a quart of water. And as always, if you responded well to this guided meditation, you probably want to try out my other videos or even get a personal session with me. You know, if you responded well, you know, then then Please do the cyber stuff to increase my ratings, subscribe, ring the bell, give thumbs up, tell your friends, leave comments, smile like an idiot, and enjoy my other videos. I love you a long time. Namaste.